Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Monday, February 8th, and from tomorrow's impeachment hearings to a potential trip to space, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, we are in for a wintry week, so I'm going to pass things off to our first alert weather team. Hour by hour forecast here, so you get the idea. It's cloudy. There's going to be some light snow throughout the day. Could get a few more bursts, 7, 8, 9 o'clock tonight. There's some light snow that may accumulate, especially on the side streets that aren't salted or a little more prepared for it. This is something I'd watch out for tomorrow morning. 5 a.m. Snow is going to become a little bit more steady, and keep in mind, it's early enough. The sun is still down, so some accumulation on roadways will be possible. But generally, I think this is a half inch, inch, maybe a little bit more type of snow. Not a big deal, but it's going to be enough just to be aware of in the morning with temperatures that are going to be cold enough. You know, the salt isn't terribly effective at those temperatures. It works, but not as well through the day tomorrow. We'll get some peaks of sunshine or at least try to. Our first alert week is still in effect as well for us, not just for today, but the chance for snow overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Another system Wednesday into Thursday to watch, and I want to keep a close eye out for this weekend. Some indications that we're going to see a nor'easter are working along the east coast. If this thing shifts tracks a little bit, I want to watch it closely. And the man accused of shooting three children and killing two Friday night was arraigned in court this morning on two counts of murder and one count of felonious assault. Kevin Moore is being held on two $2 million bonds for each count of murder and one $1 million bond for the count of felonious assault. The shooting happened on the 800 block of Burnport Drive on Friday evening. When Toledo police officers arrived, they found three boys inside the apartment, all suffering from at least one gunshot wound. Five-year-old Amir Phillips and one-year-old Gabriel Phillips died at the hospital. Four-year-old Ashton Phillips underwent surgery on Saturday morning and is now in critical but stable condition. Moore was the boyfriend of the boy's mother, Crystal Andrews. He was arrested at the scene. According to a Facebook post made by Andrews, she wasn't home when all of this happened because she was helping her mother with a moving truck. She said she came home to learn her children had been shot. This story continues to develop, so we'll be sure to keep you updated on air and online. And the second Senate impeachment trial for former President Donald Trump begins tomorrow. So let's look at a quick timeline. Tomorrow, the trial launches first with a debate and vote by the Senate over whether or not the trial is even constitutional. Then Wednesday, opening arguments will begin at noon with up to 16 hours per side for presentations. The proceedings will break Friday evening for the Jewish Sabbath at the request of Trump's defense team and then pick back up again on Sunday. There will likely be no witnesses and the former president has refused request to testify. Trump is the first president to be impeached twice and the only one to face trial after leaving office. The House approved a single charge of incitement of insurrection just one week after supporters of the former president stormed the U.S. Capitol, which was the most violent attack on Congress in more than 200 years. Five people died, including one woman who was shot by police and an officer who died from his injuries the next day. You can watch the proceedings live starting tomorrow on WTOL.com and on the WTOL Facebook page. The White House coronavirus response team held another briefing this morning, highlighting the progress being made on distributing the vaccine. Acting Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Andy Slavitt, started the press conference by acknowledging the toll the pandemic has taken on so many Americans. More than 450,000 Americans' have been, lives have been taken. We've been separated from our friends and family. Thousands of schools and businesses have been sitting empty. And Americans have had their lives turned upside down by the pandemic. But he then went on to congratulate the millions of Americans who have been wearing a mask in public and taking other steps to slow the spread of the virus before giving a brief synopsis of how the vaccine distribution process has been working so far. In the weeks and even months that you are waiting, the nation's efforts are being spent focused on many who are most at risk of hospitalization and death from this virus. The elderly, seniors, frontline healthcare workers, and many essential workers. And so far, the U.S. has administered 4.8 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to 3.7 million Americans. These briefings are currently set to be held three times a week. Could this be a glimpse into what getting back to normal could look like? Some dogs are being trained to sniff out COVID-19 so sports fans can get back to watching their favorite teams in person. 
the Miami Heat were actually the first team to give it a try. Weird, right? But a German study finds that these pups are 94% accurate in sniffing out the virus. And a Florida trainer says his dogs find COVID-19 at a 99.7% accuracy rate. Jeff Minder is the CEO and founder of Top Tier Canine in North Florida, and he believes his dogs can help not only the country, but the world start getting back to some form of normal. Minder said that Top Tier Canine has sports arenas, theme parks, universities, and prisons all launching the program, and he said that Rome has committed their ports of entry to COVID-19 dogs. And it's not just in Italy. Minder's provided COVID-19 sniffing dogs to Israel, Argentina, and Malaysia. He claims that dogs can learn to differentiate between different viruses like COVID-19 and the flu. Minder says more than 70 COVID-19 sniffing dogs have come through his program and he's currently training 30 puppies with the goal of producing 250 dogs each year that are trained to sniff out the virus. And of course, while we're talking about going to large events, we have to talk about the Super Bowl last night. So as most of you are probably aware by now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs by a score of 31 to nine. But like I've said before, I'm not really a football girl. So I wanna to talk to you about the commercials, specifically one that talked about people going into space. This ad for the inspiration for a SpaceX supported mission that will launch later this year aired during the first quarter of the game. So here's the deal. The crew will fly aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft launched via the Falcon 9 reusable rocket, the same vehicle that is now taking NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. And the mission is actually aimed at raising money and awareness for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The free trip is courtesy of payment processor Shipboard Payments, whose CEO, Jared Isaacman, will command the mission. Isaacman is billed as an accomplished pilot, philanthropist, and adventurer, and he's committed to giving $100 million to St. Jude and is hoping to raise $200 million or more. The mission has four pillars, leadership, hope, generosity, and prosperity, and each crew member will represent one of those. Isaac Min, as commander, is the leader. The hope seat goes to a St. Jude ambassador. And fun fact, our own meteorologist, Chris Vickers, is a St. Jude ambassador. So could we see him in space? I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility, which is just wild to think about. The generosity seat will go to someone who has supported the St. Jude mission through their donations. There will be a place on the website where people can donate. And already, more than $1 million was raised for St. Jude in the first 90 minutes after the commercial aired. Just incredible. And finally, the prosperity seat goes to, quote, an inspirational entrepreneur who has used the power of Shift Workshop to launch their dream business. Submissions to join the crew will be taken through February 28th, with the crew being announced in March. I mean, come on, how cool is that? But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.